the American people to know what's going on in Washington in a way that today they do not know. And when people come together in a way that does not exist now and are prepared to take on the big money interest, then we can bring the kind of change we need. Anderson, we, I actually we, we, have we, talked about a revolution. What we need is a green energy revolution. We need to move America to a 100% clean electric grid by 2050 and we want to create 5 million jobs along the way. And we can, we're going to talk more about climate change and environmental issues coming up. Some of the, uh, the candidates uh, have tried marijuana, as have pretty much probably everybody in this room. Others have not. Does that influence, <laughs> does it influence their views on legalization? Find out that and others ahead. to this uh, CNN Democratic uh, presidential debate. It has been quite a night so far. Uh, we are in the final block uh, of this debate. All the candidates are, are back, uh, which I'm very happy to see. Um, <laughs> it's a long story. Uh, let's continue, shall we? Uh, Secretary Clinton, <laughs> welcome back. Well, thank you. <laughs> You know, it does take me a little longer. That's, that's all right, I can say. That's right. Uh, Secretary Clinton, Governor Malley says the presidency is not a crown to be passed back and forth between two royal families. This year has been the year of the outsider in politics. Just ask Bernie Sanders. Why should Democrats embrace an insider like yourself? Well, I can't think of anything more of an outsider than electing the first woman president, but I'm not just running because... I would be the first woman president. I'm running because I have a lifetime of experience in getting results and fighting for people, fighting for kids, for women, for families, fighting to even the odds. And I know what it takes to get things done. I know how to find common ground, and I know how to stand my ground. And I think we're going to need both of those in Washington to get anything that we're talking about up here accomplished. So I'm very happy that I have both the commitment of a lifetime and the experience of a lifetime to bring together to offer the American people. Governor Malley, do you want to tell Secretary Clinton why she shouldn't get the crown? <laughs> well, well, actually, you know, we, we had this conversation, and I will tell, I will share with you that I've traveled all around the country, Anderson, and um, there's two phrases I keep hearing again and again and again, and they are the phrases new leadership and getting things done. We cannot be this dissatisfied with our gridlock national politics and an economy where 70% of us are earning the same or less than we were 12 years ago and think that a resort to old names is going to move us forward. I respect what Secretary Clinton and her husband have done for our country, but our country needs new leadership to move forward. Secretary Clinton, you have to be able to respond well, if you I, want. I, I would not ask anyone to vote for me based on my last name. I'd ask them to listen to what I'm proposing, look at what I accomplished, uh, in the Senate as Secretary of State, uh, and then draw your own conclusion. Uh, I certainly am not uh, campaigning to become president because my last name is Clinton. Uh, I'm campaigning because I think I have the right combination of what the country needs at this point, and I think I can take the fight to the Republicans because we cannot afford a Republican to succeed Barack Obama as President of the United States. Senator Sanders, does she have the right stuff? I think I think that there is profound frustration all over this country with establishment politics. I am the only candidate running for president who is not a billionaire, who has raised substantial sums of money, and I do not have a super PAC. I am not raising money from millionaires and billionaires. And in fact, tonight, in terms of what a political revolution is about, there are four thousand house parties, a hundred thousand people in this country watching this debate tonight who want real change in this country. We've got we a lot of uh, questions we got about uh, climate change. I want to go to Don Lemon. Don? All right, this one is from Martin O'Malley, Anderson. Governor O'Malley, this is from Anna Bettis from Tempe, Arizona. Here it is. As a young person, I'm very concerned about climate change and how it will affect my future. As presidential candidate, what will you do to address climate change? So, Governor O'Malley, please tell Anna how you would protect the environment better than all the other candidates up on that stage. Yeah. Anna, I have uh, put forward a plan, and I'm the only candidate, I believe, in either party to do this, to move America forward to a 100% clean electric grid by 2050. We did not land a man on the moon with an all-of-the-above strategy. It was an intentional engineering challenge, and we solved it as a nation. And our nation must solve this one. So 
I put forward the plan that would extend the investor tax credits for solar and for wind. If you go across Iowa, you see that 30% of their energy now comes from wind. We're here in Las Vegas, one of the most sustainable cities in America, doing important things in terms of green building, architecture, and design. We can get there as a nation, but it's going to require presidential leadership. And as president, I intend to sign as my very first order in office the, an order that moves us as a nation and dedicates our resources to solving this problem and moving us to a 100% clean electric grid by 2050. Governor, we can do Governor it. Governor O'Malley, thank you very much. Uh, Senator Webb, you have a very different view than just about anybody else on the stage, and unlike a lot of Democrats. You're pro-coal, you're pro-offshore drilling, you're pro-Keystone pipeline. Are again, are you, the question is, are you out of step with the Democratic Party? Well, the, the question really is, how are we going to solve energy problems here and in the global environment if you really want to address climate change? <clears throat> when I was in the Senate, I was an all-of-the-above energy uh, voter. We introduced legislation to bring in alternate energy as well as nuclear power. I'm a strong proponent of nuclear power. It is safe, it is clean, and really, we are not going to solve climate change simply with the laws here. We've done a good job in this country since 1970. If you look at China and India, they're the greatest polluters in the world. 15 out of the 20 most polluted cities in the world are in one of those two countries. We need to solve this in a global way. It's a global problem, and I have been very strong on, on doing that. The, the, Agreements, the so-called agreements that we have had with China are illusory in terms of the immediate requirements of the, of the Chinese government itself. So let's solve this problem in an international way, and then we really will have a, a way to address climate change. Senator Sanders, are you tougher on, on climate change than Secretary Clinton? Well, I will tell you this. Uh, I believe, and Pope Francis made this point, this is a moral issue. Uh, the scientists are telling us that we need to move extremely boldly. I am proud that along with Senator Barbara Boxer a few years ago, we introduced the first piece of climate change legislation which called for a tax on carbon. And let me also tell you that nothing is going to happen unless we are prepared to deal with campaign finance reform because the fossil fuel industry is funding the Republican Party, which denies the reality of climate change and certainly is not prepared to go forward aggressively. This is a moral issue. We have got to be extremely aggressive in working with China, India, Russia, Se the planet, Thank the you, future Senator. of the planet Se is at stake. Secretary Clinton, I want you to be able to respond and then I'm going to go to Dana. Well, that, that's exactly what I've been doing. Um, when we met in Copenhagen in 2009 and literally President Obama and I were hunting for the Chinese, going throughout this huge convention center because we knew we had to get them to agree to something because there will be no effective efforts against climate change unless China and India join with the rest of the world. They told us they'd left for the airport. We found out they were having a secret meeting. We marched up, we broke in, we said, we've been looking all over for you. Let's sit down and talk about what we need to do. And we did come up with the first international agreement that China has signed. Thanks to President Obama's leadership, it's now gone much Thank further. You. And I do think that the bilateral agreement that President Obama made with the Chinese was significant. Thank you, sir. Now, it needs to go further, and there will be an international meeting at the end of this year, and we must get verifiable commitments to fight climate change from every country gathered Dana there. Bash. Secretary Clinton, you now support mandated paid family leave. Mm -hmm. Carly Fiorina, the first female CEO of a Fortune 50 company, argues if the government requires paid leave, it will force small businesses to, quote, hire fewer people and create fewer jobs. What do you say not only to Carly Fiorina, but also a small business owner out there who says, you know, I like this idea, but I just can't afford it? Well, I'm surprised she says that because California has had a paid leave program for a number of years. And She's talking all of on the, the federal level. Well, but all, well, on a state level, a state as big as many countries in the world, and it has not had the ill effects that the Republicans are always saying it will have. And I think this is, this is typical Republican scare tactics. We can design a system and pay for it that does not put the burden on small businesses. I remember as a young mother, you know, having a baby wake up who was sick and I'm supposed to be in court because I was practicing law. I know what it's like. 
And I think we need to recognize the incredible challenges that so many parents face, particularly working moms. I see my good friend, Senator Gillibrand, in the front row. She's been a champion of this. We need to get a consensus through this campaign, which is why I'm talking about it everywhere I go, and we need to join the rest of the advanced Secretary world Clinton, in having it. Secretary Clinton, even many people who agree with you might say, Look, this is very hard to do, especially in today's day and age. There are so many people who say, really, another government program? Is that what you're proposing? And at the expense uh, of taxpayer money? Well, look, you know, when people say that, um, it's always the Republicans or their sympathizers who say, you can't have paid leave, you can't provide health care. They don't mind having big government to interfere with a woman's right to choose and to try to take down Planned Parenthood. They're fine with big government of it. You know, we can do these things. We, we should not be paralyzed. We should not be paralyzed by the Republicans and their constant refrain, big government this, big government that, except for what they want to impose on the American people. I know we can afford it because we're going to make the wealthy pay for it. That is Thank the you. way to get Senator it done. Sanders. Senator Sanders. Yeah, Dana, here's the point. Every other major country on earth, everyone, including some small countries, say that when a mother has a baby, she should stay home with that baby. We are the only major country that is an international embarrassment that we do not provide family, paid family and medical leave. Second of all, well, the secretary is right. Republicans tell us we can't do anything except give tax breaks to billionaires and cut Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid. That's not what the American people want. Governor O'Malley? Yeah, Anderson, in our state, we actually expanded family leave, and I have to agree with Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders. Look, the genius of our nation is that we find ways in every generation to include more of our people more fully in the economic life of our country. And we need to do that for our families, especially to, so that women aren't penalized and having to drop out of the workforce. My wife Katie's here with our four kids, and man, that was a juggle when we had little kids and, and keeping jobs and moving forwards. We would be a stronger nation economically if we had paid family leave. Governor, thank you. Uh, the, the issue now, particularly in this state, is recreational marijuana. I want to go to Juan Carlos uh, Lopez. Thank you, Anderson. Senator Sanders, right here in Nevada, there will be a measure to legalize recreational marijuana on the 2016 ballot. You said you smoked marijuana twice. didn't quite work for you. <laughs> if you were a Nevada resident, how would you vote? Um, I suspect I would vote yes. And I would vote yes because I am seeing in this country too many lives being destroyed uh, for nonviolent offenses. Uh, we have a criminal justice system that lets CEOs on Wall Street walk away, and yet we are imprisoning or giving jail sentences to young people who are smoking marijuana. I think we have to think through this war on drugs, which has done an enormous amount of damage. We need to rethink our criminal justice system, and we've got a lot of work to do in that area. On Secretary Clinton, you told Christiana Manpour you didn't smoke pot when you were young, and you're not going to start now. <laughs> when asked about legalizing recreational marijuana, you told her, let's wait and see how it plays out in Colorado and Washington. It's been more than a year since you said that. Are you ready to take a position tonight? No. I think that we have the opportunity through the states that are uh, pursuing uh, recreational marijuana to find out a lot more than we know today. I do support the use of medical marijuana, and I think even there we need to do a lot more research so that we know exactly how we're going to help people uh, for whom uh, medical marijuana provides relief. So. I think we're just at the beginning, but I agree completely with the idea that we have got to stop imprisoning people who use marijuana. Therefore, we need more states, cities, and the federal government to begin to address this so that we don't have this terrible result that Senator Sanders was talking about, where we have a huge population in our prisons 
for nonviolent, low-level offenses that are primarily due to marijuana. Secretary Clinton, thank you. I want to go to Don Lemon with another Facebook question. Don? All right, Anderson, this is for Senator Sanders, okay? This is from Kerry Kane. Kerry Kane from Manassas, Virginia would like to ask the senator. President Obama has had a difficult time getting Republicans to compromise on just about every agenda. How will you approach this going forward, and will it be any 